Yeah. Are we ready to hear an exciting round of persuasive speeches? Get pumped, yeah. that's all I like to do. <laughs> Mm. You've been working out? Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Please don't answer the note that shot <laughs> Before we begin, I would just like to say, folks, that we have four short weeks of school left. Yes. So let's make the best four weeks that we can oh, that we have together. Whoa. Do we have school on Thursday? This what? Thursday? Yeah. Wait. Yes. But isn't it Thanksgiving Day? Next Thursday, Valerie. Next Thursday. Third Thursday. <laughs> 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 next Thursday. Oh. Okay. Are we gonna have class next week? Holy crap! Thanksgiving's so, around the yeah, corner. I get it rough. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have three dinners this Thanksgiving. That's my goal. I don't work at night. Oh. Okay. 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 I'm gonna quit. If I had a job, I could. I don't miss things too much. Okay, Tamara, are you ready? Audience, are you ready? Let's give Sean a round of applause. <laughs> Samara is eight years old. Two years ago, she lost her parents <coughs> and her brothers. Samara, too, was injured two years ago. She actually took shrapnel to her chin, her chest, and her shoulder. She smiles and points into the distance at a bunch of buildings that are just wrecked and demolished, smiling and says, I live there. According to international aid groups, 28,000 children live on the streets in the city and manage as scavengers, such as Samara and her friends. They start out at daybreak, going to collect garbage and wood to burn and sell. Something should be done about the war in Afghanistan and in the Middle East. It has been a problem for Americans and the world for decades to come. Today I will first uncover the problems the war causes to the people in the United States, the money that is spent on this feudal conflict, and follow, finally the solutions. First, I'd like to talk about the children that are affected. According to Afghanistan Child Victims on the Rise, a UN report, during the two-year period, the Secretary General said around 1,800 children were injured because of conflict-related violence. But he says that figure is somewhat under-reported due to the conflict areas being so hard to access. This is just merely one of the problems children face. In another article, Afghanistan's Neglected Casualties of War by Shala, it states that polio is on the rise, and most of the areas where these children are scavenging for wood and for their garbage is infected with polio to such an extent that our troops won't even go in there with the proper vaccinations. According to Child Victims of War, child labor in Afghanistan is on the rise. Young boys at around six to seven are being conscripted into the uh, Afghanistan police and other military aspects at such a young age and just forced into violence that is doing irreparable damage on their psyche for the rest of their lives. In an article by CBS News titled Soldiers in Afghanistan Killed During, their four During the 14th Deployment, three American soldiers, their story becomes revealed to us. Ashley White, 24 years old, was assigned to the 230th Brigade Support Battalion, 30th Heavy Brigade Combat Team from North Carolina's National Guard, which is actually one of the few women in this area as a cultural attache was actually killed, just adding to the loss of life in the, in the conflict areas. <coughs> Next, I would like to go over the money that is spent by the United States to keep this war afloat. According to military spending waste up by our logger, up to $60 billion in Iraq-Afghanistan war funds are lost to poor planning. As much as $60 billion in U.S. funds has been lost to waste and fraud in the Afghanistan war over the past decade through lax oversight of contractors, poor planning, and payoffs to warlords and insurgents as an independent panel. In an article also by David Leonard from the New York Times, suggests where the money could actually be going. In a three to four year, year span, if LEED stops allocating so much funds 
to the war effort and to rebuilding their infrastructure and put it towards our infrastructure, our school systems would flourish based on that alone. So now I'd like to go over a couple of solutions and a couple of stats that I have for you. Here you can see the entire total cost of the war in the Middle East since 2001 exceeds $1 trillion. Just in Afghanistan alone, we have $373 billion, 800000 and some change. Here also you can see that our defense spending, out of every dollar that we pay in taxes, a fifth of it is going to the defense. According to Carl Connett in the Income Source of Defense Briefing Memo number 28, preparing the residual damage to an accumulated despair of key infrastructure, industry, and services that resulted from 12 years of sanctions from 1990 to 1991 probably cost 30 to $35 billion. And since then, we've added anywhere from 15 to $20 billion. So what everyone is saying right about now is how are we going to stop the war? How are we going to pull out? There is no clear actual deadline to pull out of the entire conflict in the Middle East, only Iraq right now. So on Capitol Hill, there are a lot of congressmen that are going for a coup de grace, where they are trying to establish a new policy where they actually do not pay congressmen for any deficit related to something that is not directly inside of our, of our own country. In conclusion, today we learned about Afghanistan, the Middle East War, the repercussions, <coughs> and uh, people, children, soldiers, and the money that was spent. Thank you.